Welcome to the Blockchain Hustle, where I take a look at some interesting plays of how blockchain technology is opening up new business vistas across multiple industries. Hi everyone, this is your host Meenu Sereen with the ninth episode of the Blockchain in Public Sector series. In the last few episodes, I shared a few examples of the blockchain projects undertaken in the public sector in Europe and then a few key findings from those which have been undertaken in India, followed by some examples from UAE. And uh, now in this episode, I would share some on the land of smiles, Thailand. Well, when I was uh, looking at Thailand, I remembered one saying that uh, in Thailand, there are at least 13 different smiles, 13 different smiles that a Thai person may use and each has its own specific meaning. I give you a few examples. Uh, one of them is like, I'm so happy I'm crying. And then there's a teasing one, I told you so smile. And then there's a dry smile, which is, I know I owe you money, but I don't have it. It's that kind of a smile. Oh, well, you get the drift. <laughs> okay, now let's not get carried away. Let's come back to the blockchain world. Okay, here goes. Now, the country is using blockchain in its Thailand 4.0 policy initiative. And under this initiative, it is uh, it emphasizes the use of the digital technologies to spur the national economic growth. Thailand's digital government uh, development agency, the DGA, cites three major use cases of blockchain in the public sector. First, your data management and data exchange. And in this, they shared examples from China, which uses blockchain, uh, blockchain for the digital forensics to prevent data forgery in court cases. The second one is on the identity management. And the example that they cited here was uh, from UN, of UN having used blockchain to keep a track of the migrant populations. And the third one is the traceability and the food safety. And the shared example from here is on, uh, the shared example is from India, on adopting the blockchain to track the pharmaceutical through the supply chains. And it's basically to combat the counterfeit drugs. Now the use of uh, blockchain by the Thai government, it date back, dates back to 2017. That is when the State Railway of Thailand, SRT, and the Thailand Post announced using blockchain. In the SRT's case, it was for building up a dedicated communication system to increase the accuracy of its railway itinerary, while for the Thailand Post, it was to enhance the security of the high-value parcels which are shipped on its logistics network. Now, apart from the transportation and the logistics, Thailand has also seen the importance of blockchain in strengthening its democracy process, and that is voting. In early 2019, NECTIC, which is uh, Thailand's National Electronics and Computer Technology Center, NECTIC completed the development of the blockchain-based voting system. Further testing for the large-scale implementation is pending. And when we talk about voting on a blockchain, actually several countries, including Japan, South Korea, and a few more, they have been pretty active in this. That is to get a blockchain-based voting for a very reliable and a secure online voting. Now, another one on blockchain in the public sector here in Thailand is on the blockchain-based national digital identity. In November last year, that is 2019, the ETDA, which is the Electronic Transactions Development Agency, ETDA is a unit under the Ministry of uh, Digital Economy and Society, it embarked on a national uh, digital ID project. And leveraging this, what the ETDA, ETDA aims for is to use uh, the blockchain-based timestamping to authenticate and to verify the digital identities of all the Thai citizens. So having a national digital identity and then you can have the voting and other stuff coming on top of that. 
given that agriculture has been the traditional backbone for the Thai economy, the trade policy and the strategy office in Thailand, TPSO, has also announced a pilot project to use blockchain for tracking the agri-produce and monitoring the quality of the exports. So these are a few examples which have been listed under the Thailand uh, blockchain use cases. And in addition, the Ministry of Finance has also announced <clears throat> three, sorry, three blockchain projects in cooperation with the Krunk Thai Bank. And uh, these blockchain projects are the first one is on the, the tourist VAT refunds. Now, just like agriculture is the backbone of the economy, of the Thai economy, tourism and the exports are another two sectors which contribute pretty significantly to Thailand's GDP. So when we come, when we talk about the tourist VAT refunds, uh, this thing was launched in Jan 2020. It's a VAT uh, refund mobile application. And uh, picking up, picking tourism as a significant contributor to the uh, country's GDP, as I mentioned, the objective here is to prevent a f uh, fake refund claims. And it also, of course, reduces your paper-based documentation and uh, it streamlines the government operations. And the next project which was announced was on the government e-procurement. To become a government supplier, it's necessary to provide a guarantee. Now, if you can have this guarantee on a blockchain, that would reduce the need for collateral checks on the suppliers. And this is going to streamline the government's procurement process. And for this particular work, the <coughs> sorry credit scoring is going to be provided by Krung Thai Bank. And the last one here is on the government bond issue which actually is issuing scriptless saving, bond, uh, saving bonds. It reduces your issuance time. The aim is actually to reduce it from 15 days to two days and to explore secondary market trading. And foremost is to increase the accessibility of these bonds to the general public. And this project is being run by the Public Debt Management Office. In addition to that, uh, Thailand has also successfully completed the trials of a digital trade platform. And for this, it has used Entity Data's blockchain tech. This was done under the National Digital Trade Platform Project. And it is an initiative from your Thailand's Joint Standing Committee on the Commerce, Industry and Banking of Thailand. So mainly, uh, what the Thai public sector is doing is it is deploying the blockchain technology as an integrity foundation layer for the applications which are developed under the Thailand's Digital Economy 4.0 initiative. And we'll have more applications further, like customs, the e-visa on arrival on a, block, on a blockchain, you'll have your e-KYC, you can trade solar energy and so forth. But then that's, these are some things which are being explored. Okay. So this wraps up the share on a few examples as well as key findings from some of the geographies across the world on how public sector is exploring and seeing the benefits of blockchain. As a quick recap, what all we covered? Well, we covered the land title registry in Georgia, the academic credentials in Malta, smart vouchers as well as the pension infrastructure in Netherlands and also the decentralized identity in Switzerland. And along with it, we talked about insights which were garnered from some of the blockchain projects undertaken in Europe. And I also took you through some key findings from the public sector blockchain projects undertaken in India, mainly the insights from Niti Aayog, the India think tank. And uh, then I shared some examples from UAE and in this particular episode, the ones from Thailand. I do hope that all these would have provided you a good look into the public sector blockchain use cases and geographies. Now, with this background, I will continue further with the topic to blockchain or not. But then that's for the next episode. So do stay tuned and stay well. Cheers. You've been listening to the Blockchain Hustle. Did you enjoy this podcast? So please do leave a short review.
like it share it download it subscribe to it what should i talk about next please do let me know your suggestions by writing to me at meenu at vlsiconsultancy.com or through any of the other contact channels as shared in the episode notes. Thank you.